Welcome to Boots 5. My name's William. Today I'm talking about the 13 types of boots that every man must completely, absolutely, fully, wholly, utterly, totally, thoroughly, unless, you know, in some cases you don't have to, but you could, entirely must know. Let's get into it. <clears throat> 13 types of boots you better know. You got to know. Kicking off this list at number one is the Chelsea boot. Now, Chelsea boots, the most iconic part about them is this elastic gore panel. And typically they're made with two pieces of leather sewn down the middle, uh, but you can also find what's called a whole cut Chelsea that is an entire one piece of leather all the way around. Those are a lot more expensive and usually uh, higher quality leather as well. This is the Ace Marks Troy. It's kind of my favorite style of Chelsea boot. It's very slim, very sleek, um, but I'm also wearing like one that's kind of done more like a combat boot. This is from Koyo. And then there's also, you know, Red Wing makes kind of a workwear type Chelsea boot. There's so many different, such a variety of different types of Chelsea boots out there. So really you can find anything that fits your aesthetic. So number one, the Chelsea boot. Coming in at number two is the service boot. Now, one of the most iconic versions of a service boot is the Red Wing Iron Ranger. It has this name because service members serving in the military uh, would wear boots that are were pretty similar to this. Basically super rugged, uh, really tough leather, lots of stitching around the seam so that basically you're not gonna have a boot fall off or break apart in the middle of you know some pretty hectic situations. So it is based around military service. The Red Wing Iron Ranger is based off of what iron miners wore in the late 1800s. And you know, this, uh, you know, the iconic thing about this, it's got the cap toe, but not all service boots have a cap toe. Some of them are plain toe. This is a Grand Stone Diesel. Uh, and this is where you see more of a dressy side of a service boot come out. Now, service boots aren't very dressy at all. They're still very casual and can even be worn in working situations. Uh, I wouldn't wear this to a hard job site or anything like that. But this kind of gives you a idea of how much range, how much variety that is within the service boot category. Coming in at number three, one of the most popular styles of boots on the planet is a chukka boot. Now there's also, again, here a huge variety of chukkas you can go dressy, you can go casual. For my money, I'd probably go with something like the Thursday Scout. Now, this boot does a really good job at, you know, when you first get it, you can wear it to all these formal engagements because it is, you know, the leather's good quality. If you get one of the shinier leathers, um, you know, it has a good shine to it, looks really classy. And then as it wears in, as it starts to crease, you know, after the first six months or eight months or something like that, then you can kind of transition it into more casual wear and wear it like you would like a service boot or anything like that. You can style it pretty much the same. Now, number four is actually a type of chukka, but I want to give it its own category because it is so iconic. It is so legendary. That is the desert boot and it is the Clark's desert boot specifically. Now, desert boots, super simple. They have a stitch down construction right here, basically two pieces of leather, and then they have a crepe sole. Uh, this is the desert boot three. This actually isn't a crepe sole. They replaced the crepe sole because in my opinion, crepe soles suck, uh, but they did something a little more typical that's more rugged, more durable. And yeah, Desert Boot got its name. Uh, fighters, British soldiers coming back from Africa, they, they'd find this type of boot everywhere and Nathan Clark brought it back. It's what put Clarks on the map and the rest is history. Coming in at number five, we cannot forget these. We cannot leave these off. They are hiking boots. Now. We don't really give a lot of time and attention to hiking boots, uh, you know, that's really left to the world of walkers and hikers. But this is one of the original uses or, or you know, use cases for boots. When people are making boots, they do it for long, long treks. Now, hiking boots have a whole bunch of different considerations than normal leather boots, like say, like the Red Wing Iron Ranger. You know, you have Gore-Tex, you have uh, different types of soles with different types of traction that are really important if you're going on a super long hike and need special considerations. So. You know, it does take a full expert to really go in and talk about how different hiking boots perform. I really like the Vast Clarion uh, because it's super light and it works for my purposes, but in your arsenal, you should always have a hiking boot. Coming in at number six is the Oxford or Balmoral boot. And here's a really good example from Beckett Simenon. Now, a Balmoral boot, one of the interesting things about it is it looks, it's basically like an Oxford shoe, but it has a higher ankle uh, and that you know makes it a boot. So what's characteristic about that is this closed lacing system right here. Uh, basically, that keeps it in the dress category. So this is, I would consider this a dress boot. You can just tell by the look of it. This is a super sleek, super sexy boot. Again, this is from Beckett Simenon. Coming in at number seven, it's quite related to the Balmoral boot, or the Oxford boot. It's actually called a derby boot. 
This is another dress boot, but instead of the closed lacing system, it has an open lacing system. Again, you can wear this in more formal occasions. It's just like a derby shoe. Whenever you could wear a derby shoe, you could also wear a derby boot. In my opinion, I wouldn't get both. I would just get one or the other. I really prefer the Balmoral, that closed lacing system for a dress boot. That's why I went with the Balmoral over the derby, but it's also worth noting. Number eight, sometimes you need to bust out a chainsaw. And for that, you're gonna want, oh my goodness. Number eight, sometimes you wanna bust out a chainsaw, bust out a hammer, I don't know, bust, bust out an anvil, I don't know, work stuff. You're gonna want a work boot for that. This is the area work hog. I actually hit this with some mink oil in the previous video, and that made it even more waterproof than it already was. But why I like Ariat work boots, uh, they do have an ATS insole, which means it's super soft, super squishy, has tons of arch support. Uh, and these are very easy to stand on in your, you know, stand in all day long. Looking at a good work boot, you want thick leather, a composite or steel toe, and you want it to be comfortable because you're gonna be standing on your feet all day long. Number nine is a specialized type of work boot. It is called the logger boot. Now this is the Thursday logger. I wouldn't necessarily do any logging in this boot. This is more of a fashion boot but it's based on the logger style and it does a good demonstration. Now, most loggers are gonna have what's called a Cuban heel where you can kind of see this, this uh, arch right here in the heel. And it's also a higher heel, just so if you need to lock in your foot, um, th that extra bit of heel right there really helps secure your foot. And that tread is usually in most models quite, quite heavy, quite, quite thick. So you're gonna get a lot of traction in these boots. A lot of logger boots sometimes come with spikes in them as well. So you can get some with spikes, without spikes, or you can have some where you actually screw them in. A logger boot is all about safety, all about ruggedness, all about durability. So again, this is the Thursday logger. I think this is a super cool looking boot. I would not log in this. I wouldn't bust out a chainsaw and start whipping it around. I would definitely wear this out on a Friday night, and drink some beers, but wouldn't be whipping chainsaws with it. Before we hit number 10, I'm gonna throw in a little bonus here for the Clark's Wallaby. Is it a boot? Is it a slipper? I have no idea. What the heck is this thing? Do people even know what the wallaby animal is? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Does this count as a type of boot, the Clark's wallaby? Hmm, we'll find out. Next up, number 10, super important type of boot. It is the mock toe. Now, my personal favorite mock toe is the Grant Stone Brass Boot. It's a little bit lower profile. Again, it has this uh, U right here in the front. That is that moccasin toe construction, hence the name mock toe, um, but I really like mock toes in winter, in fall, and the Grant Stone Brass has tons of tread right here, so it's super, super stable when you're walking on slush, rain, um, you know, snow or anything like that. The most iconic version is the Red Wing mock toe. Again, it still has that moccasin toe construction right here, but it has a wedge sole. Um, this is, again, tons of traction on this, really rugged leather. Uh, both of these, you can't you can't go wrong. I just personally like the, I think this fits better. The Grant Stone Brass fits better into more of a casual wardrobe. Whereas this, uh, the Red Wing Mock Toe is kind of a balance between work and casual. This is kind of more of a balance between casual and dress while still having that masculine aesthetic. Boot number 11 is the Jodhpur boot. Now this is originally based off of English riding boots. They kind of evolved to be a little more fashionable uh, and then eventually turned into the Chelsea boot that we saw at the very beginning of this video. But classic things about a Jodhpur boot is that it has this leather strap around here that ends in a buckle. Now this is the Taft Dillon. I think this is one of the coolest looking shoes I've ever seen in my life. I love this woven upper. Uh, not all Jodhpur boots have a woven upper but the Taft Dillon does. If you're just starting off and building a boot collection, I wouldn't get a Jodhpur and a Chelsea. I would choose one or the other um, because they are pretty interchangeable. They both hit that balance between formal and casual, so you can kind of blend those lines, but I wouldn't have both unless you really, really like the style. I personally really, really like the style, and so the Jodhpur boot, when you get that little extra bit of hardware in there, sometimes it's that little elevation that makes the whole outfit come together. Number 12 is the engineer boot. Now this one has a rich history. Again, it's another work boot when engineers, they're shoveling coal, throwing it into the furnace to get those trains choo-choo chugging. No longer, we don't use that for uh, trains anymore. We don't use coal, we use magnets. So they just shovel magnets into the furnace and that's how trains run now. Engineer boots are typically a little more bulbous, super rugged. They have a single strap running around the outside ending in a buckle. A lot of motorcyclists like to wear engineer boots because the leather tends to be super, super thick and you don't have to do a ton of walking in these boots usually. So if you need something that is heavy in the protection department uh, and looks really cool, 
has that workwear aesthetic, then the engineer boot is a great way to go. We're gonna end this one on a little bit of a sad note. Boot number 13, it's the duck boot. I don't know why I said it's a sad note. I don't, there's nothing really sad about duck boots. I guess I see guys here in North Carolina, they just like wear this with shorts. I guess it's cool, I wear it fishing. Uh, but duck boots, they keep your feet dry, completely waterproof, they got these funky soles. This is the Sperry Topsider. Probably the most popular one is the L.L. Bean uh, duck boot. And uh, yeah, it's duck boot, it's pretty cool. Keeps your feet dry. What are you gonna do? Gonna wear it in Massachusetts? Maybe. If I could only own three of these types of boots, it would be the Chelsea boot, the service boot, and the hiking boot. Now, the reason for that, Chelsea boot can act as a dress boot. You know, it's not typically a dress boot, but if you get something like the Ace Marks Troy, very slim, very sleek, you get it in black leather, this can do pretty well in a formal occasion. I get the service boot, because this is a great all day, every day type of boot. I mean, look at this thing, this is sexy, this is rugged. It hits that balance between like, it's like a work, it has that workwear aesthetic, but still looks good with a pair of jeans going out on the town. And then of course I'd get a hiking boot because I love to go hiking and uh, this is specialty footwear. And if you're gonna do a lot of hiking, you just need a hiking boot. So that's why I do that. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and also let me know in the comments below. Um, also hit the subscribe button, it helps the channel out so much and I really, really appreciate it. We still have to answer whether or not the Clark's Wallaby is a boot or not, or is it just a slipper? I don't know, we gotta categorize this thing. We're the only ones who are gonna do it, so we gotta get it done. Guys, until next time, put your best boot forward.